Hey, how's it going? Let's pick it up in Acts chapter 18 and read the rest of that chapter with verses 23 through 28. And also read Acts chapter 19 and read verses 1 through 7. After spending some time in Antioch, Paul set out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only about the uh, baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. When Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed. For he vigorously refuted his Jewish opponents in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. So let's go back to chapter 18, read verse 23. It says, after spending some time in Antioch, Paul sent out from there and traveled from place to place throughout the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all uh, the disciples. So Paul has been going to uh, Thessalonica and Athens and Corinth, going to many different places. Uh, he was just in Antioch. It says after spending some time in Antioch, he set out from there. So he's doing a lot of different stuff. And so while he's doing all this different stuff, then there we start switching gears to follow a guy named Apollos. And so it reads in uh, verse 24, meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos. So we're following a Jew named Apollos. So this is a guy doing separate, you know, separate ministry from the ministry of Paul, at least at this point. And it says a native of Alexandria. So that's Alexandria, Egypt. So this is a Jew from Egypt, which is interesting because he, you know, Egypt is the place where uh, the, uh, the kingdom of Israel was enslaved uh, in the book of Exodus. And so in the Old Testament. And so he's a Jew from uh, Alexandria, Egypt, he comes to Ephesus. And Ephesus then is the place where Ephesians, uh, the book of Ephesians, that letter uh, was written to the church in Ephesus. So uh, he was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. So this is a Jew from Egypt. He has a very thorough knowledge of the scriptures. What's really interesting though, in verse 25, he had been instructed in the way of the Lord and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately. So that's really interesting. So this guy from Egypt ends up somehow finding out uh, about God, about Jesus, actually. And what's even more bizarre is he finds out about Jesus, but he only knows of the baptism of John. So he doesn't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit yet. Uh, he only knows about that. It doesn't seem like he's heard about it and chooses not to believe. It seems like he doesn't know about it at all, at least as how I'm reading it. And so this guy named Apollos is from Egypt. Uh, he's going to Ephesus and he uh, speaks with great fervor. He's definitely a great speaker. He knows the scriptures well. And so he's going to Ephesus and he's doing ministry there. Verse 26, it says he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. So uh, Priscilla and Aquila, these are people we've kind of followed a little bit. Um, in previous stories, uh, Paul was making tents with them, and uh, they ended up talking to uh, talking to Apollos. And what it seems like is when they say explain to him the way of God more adequately. To me, that speaks that they're probably talking about since he, you know, what we know about him is that he only knew the baptism of John. They're probably talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Then is what I would presume. Um, and so they end up talking to him about that. Uh, and then verse 27, when Apollos wanted to go to Achaia, again, I don't know exactly how to pronounce that, but uh, the brothers and sisters encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. When he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed, for he vigorously refuted his Jewish opponents in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah. So, uh, interesting guy, uh, Apollos. When I look through the book of Ephesians, um, it doesn't seem like there's any mention of him there, although that is where he is uh, currently is in Ephesus. 
Um, it looks like he's the same guy that's mentioned in 1 Corinthians and also uh, I believe his name is in uh, Titus as well. Um, and uh, there was another place in, I think, at the end of Romans, uh, but the spelling was a little different, so I'm not sure if that means that uh, uh, could be the same guy, could be a different guy, it seemed like. So uh, anyway, the uh, this guy is mentioned in other places, it seems like, um, and uh, but not in the book of Ephesians. Um, but this guy uh, is somebody that's doing good ministry. Um, kind of an odd thing, though, whenever I read something like this, and, uh, you know, I'm somebody that's kind of uh, likes to question things and wondering why in the world is this even in here? Like we're following Paul and then all of a sudden we're just following this guy for a uh, name to Paul's for, from verses 24 through 28. Kind of an odd thing. But we see kind of exactly why and what's going on here in verse 1 of chapter 19. It says, while Apollos was at Corinth, so he's just at Ephesus, he goes to Corinth now, uh, which is then where Corinthians is written and he is mentioned in Corinthians. Um, and Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. So now we're following Paul again. Paul goes to Ephesus, which is where Apollos just was. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So I don't exactly know if Apollos then did believe about uh, in the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that sort of a thing after he talked to Priscilla and Aquila or exactly what happened there. Either way, some people that he had taught still did not even know about the Holy Spirit. And so Paul meets some of these people. And I think that's kind of why this story is put in here, is it puts context to why these people did not know about the Holy Spirit but did believe in Jesus. It's because there was this guy named Apollos that ended up teaching them, and uh, and so they didn't know about it. And so when Paul goes to talk with them, they didn't even know about it. In verse 3, it says, So Paul asked them, What baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. And this is where it's kind of all t uh, ties together. Apollos knew John's baptism but didn't know... Uh, anything beyond that. And so that is exactly what these people have as well. Verse 4, Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied there were about 12 men in all. So these people then were prayed for by Paul and they received the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues and prophesied. Uh, really cool story. We get to learn a little bit about Apollos and then follow Paul again. Um, really neat stuff in there. What can we learn from these verses? Um, it's always good if, if, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, go ahead and pursue that. That is a really good thing. Um, also, whether you have the baptism of the Holy Spirit or not, let's try to gain a further connection with God. Let's pursue Him. Let's worship God. Let's spend time in His presence. Let's pray. Let's grow in that because it's one of those things that we want to keep building on that. We want to keep building on our connection with God. We want to keep learning about Him and knowing Him. And so let's just continue in that. Let's just continue to pursue Him and see what God has for us today. So let's pray and close this out. Lord God, I just thank you and praise you, and I just pray, Lord God, that uh, your presence would just be so tangible to us today, Lord God. I just pray that uh, for whatever whatever might be going on, Lord God, we just pray that at work and uh, at home and everywhere we go, we can feel your presence, we can feel your spirit. Help us to have that just kind of constant awareness of you, Lord God. Help us to grow that connection. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.